There were also calls for change in the state legislative building today. Democrats and advocates gathered to push for more gun safety bills after the shooting. A recent WRL News poll showed strong bipartisan support for tougher gun laws in North Carolina. Our Capitol Bureau Chief Laura Leslie joins us live from the legislative building where Republicans don't seem receptive to the idea. Laura? Gerald, for the last decade, North Carolina lawmakers have concentrated on loosening the state's gun laws, making it easier to carry firearms in more places. Democrats who are in the minority here have been trying but failing to get any kind of gun reform bill or gun safety measure passed into law. Well, as mothers of murdered children protested outside today in favor of gun reform, Democrats called on their Republican colleagues to come to the table and start discussing this next session. Gun reform advocate Alicia Taylor Campbell brings these battered running shoes to every event. These are the last pair of shoes that Ahmad wore the night he was killed and murdered. Her son, Ahmad Campbell, was a junior at NCA&T when he was shot after a fight broke out at a party. Since then, she's been advocating for more restrictive gun laws. She felt sick when she heard about the shooting in Headingham. It was a definitely a trigger for me because it could have easily been me, and people don't understand until it affects your home. When it affects your home, it's a different story. It was much too close to home for Senate Minority Leader Dan Blue. He's lived in Headingham for 30 years. He said it's easy to pretend it can't happen here. It can and it did. It could have been any of us anywhere in North Carolina, anywhere in this United States. This was the second deadliest shooting in our state's history. Democrats have filed bill after bill to tighten gun laws over the past few years, but GOP leaders have not allowed even one to have a hearing, let alone a vote. House Minority Leader Robert Reeves said state lawmakers owe it to the people to try to find middle ground. Imagine what could happen if we just sat and talked. But again, you can't have the conversation now. And that breaks my heart because we've literally become a society that has just accepted that bad things are going to happen and we can't do anything about it because of politics. And that can't be who we're, we are and what we're about. Uh, we did ask Red Republican legislative leaders to comment on this. House Speaker Tim Moore sent us this statement. Politicizing this tragedy is wrong. We need to allow how law enforcement to complete their investigation before jumping to any conclusion about policy changes. He added, as they continue their investigation, we should remain focused on praying for the victims' families and supporting law enforcement rather than seizing the moment for a political debate. Gerald? Laura Leslie, live on Jones Street. Thank you, Laura.